Hello and welcome back. In this video, we will take a look at workflow, specifically scripting and workflows. Let's start the tutorial as always with the code. First, let's cover some basic on workflows. Uh, workflows. According to ServiceNow docs, it states that the workflow editor as an interface for creating and modifying workflows by arranging and connecting activities to drive process. So you can think of workflow as automated sequence of activities and it's in this activity where uh, we'll be writing ex, uh, the JavaScript code. Workflows are server-side JavaScript and do not get executed on client side. There are many different locations to, to script a, a, in a workflow since there are many different activities that offer scripting component. There is also different scope in workflow. So what data do you have to access when you are scripting and the, with this workflows activity will go that in detail in just a bit. So workflow context are created when workflow condition is related to true. So for example, if I create a new change and that change is of type comprehensive, then a new workflow context is created using this comprehensive change workflow and its blueprint. Workflow also have versioning and there is a checkout and publish feature. So you can check out a workflow which will essentially create a new working version and it won't affect the currently published workflow version in a system. So let's move on. Now let's take have a look into a scripting and workflows. Scripting and workflow should be looked at as some as a last resort okay there are too many out of the box features and the workflow engine specifically specifically many out of the box activity that should be in place of scripting so only use scripting if the out of the box features or activities are not enough some of the most common activities that support scripting are approval activities the run script activity if statement uh, wait for condition activities and create task activity notification activity the scriptable order guide activity the rest message and soap message activity i recommend it to check out the wiki articles for a comprehensive guide to all the workflows activity because it will be not be possible from my side to cover each and every activity in detail as a developer it's a good idea to read through this list of activities to know what exactly is available to uh, with you in the out of the box activities right now let's talk a little bit about the scope you as a developer have while scripting the workflow activity so for example if this specific workflow is on a change table then we will have an access to the current record or the current object this current object stores all the uh, all the field values for the current change we also have access to workflow scratchpad object and it's here where we can share values between activities so if we write something to the scratchpad and one activity we can access that from the another activity there are also activity specific variables that are only defined within a specific activity and of course there are local variables where we define local variables within an activity so if we are in a script uh, in a uh, for example let's take if script activity and we define a local variable there then we can only use that variable within that activity scope can be little tricky at first okay so you have once you start i recommend playing around with the workflow to get a feel for what you have access to also i highly recommend to go through the wiki articles so that uh, you will come to know about general scripting within workflow now let's go through some of the most common workflow activities that use the scripting field so i am looking into the scripting field because i got a couple of comments from the viewers to have a deep time in all the session in terms of scripting okay. so the first one take a look at is this if condition the service now docs did the activity checks a condition or script to determine if 
a yes or no transition should be taken. If the workflow creator specify both the condition and the advanced script both must evaluate successful for activity to take the yes transition so that the image shown in the bottom left. We have an if condition activity any user approvals and in our script we are finding if a specific value variable on the workflow does uh, suppose scratch pad has any value assigned to it if it does then we return full return yes if it doesn't then we return no and it is this code that determines which path the workflow takes it's important that you set the answer variable to either yes or no you are not using the boolean javascript variables true or false over here so most of the people when it comes to take a decision so they prefer going with the boolean value but in this scenarios when it comes to the if activity in workflow will be either passing yes or no which will be a string value you are use you will be using actual string values text yes or no okay let's have a, let's take a look on the at the wait for condition so according to the service now dog stays the wait for condition activity causes the workflow to wait at the at this activity until the current record matches the specified condition so you can specify a condition on which uh, way uh, activity will wait the workflow evaluates the wait for condition activity each time the record is updated use this activity to pause the workflow indefinitely until a particular criteria is met by a record update so wait for activity will cause the workflow to wait at this point in time until the logic evaluates to true and it gets evaluated every time that record is updated so if you are updating rec if you are changing anything on the record this wait for condition will again get evaluated so when the image shown uh, in the image shown on the left side we have a check or subtask or an activity uh, active wait for activity and we are running a glide record query and setting the answer variable to return the value has next this condition script gets evaluated every time that this record is updated now for now don't worry about the actual code and condition script we'll cover this in coming tutorials once i cover all the basic entities of the service now okay for now it is just important to understand what the actual wait for condition is doing now let's move to one of my favorite activity uh, so it's a approval user activity so this activity creates a user approval and the answer variable must set must be set either to a comma separated list or an array of user or group societies okay that we would like to send the approvals to send this approval uh, using this uh, workflow approval activity we have complete control over who we are assigning this approval to with the additional approval script so you uh, you can either uh, from this script you can define any kind of logic you can pull some records out some users out or some groups out based on the logic you want to formulate and you can define it and the approach will get triggered based on activity to those users or those groups okay and now we will take a look at two quick use cases for workflow script okay and the first use case we want to dynamically assign approvals okay um, sorry it's the second one so dynamically assign approvals to a specific group of users so when we want to trigger an approval to a specific group of users we can do it via workflow the second one is like in the slide this is the first one uh, use case would like to trigger a web service call via workflow activity so as i mentioned earlier also we have soap activity and rest activity also so using those activity we can trigger no integration also so this is all done in terms of theory now let's have some practical uh, so let's move to the service now instance thank you. demo side thank you so welcome back as always this is the home page when we sign into service now so most uh, most of you must have familiar with this interface now 
okay so how to navigate to workflow so to navigate to workflow it's quite easy in filter navigator we will type workflow and then you can have an option called workflow editor so you can open it out the interface is quite different what you have seen till now so let's wait to load uh, so this is the interface when you come to the workflow okay so here this is a dashboard kind of thing where you can see three tabs published will show you all the published workflow which are currently true in the system checkout will show all the workflows which are not published okay you can create a workflow directly from here and there's a help section if you need some documentation so they have really good documentation if you want to refer to so you can refer those documentation so let's have a let's have a look into some of the workflows okay so let's take some change one change is my favorite topic so let's take comprehensive change okay so what this workflow is doing so i will explain you the basic entity of the workflow so this is how the workflow looks like i will just minimize it out this is how the workflow looks like so every workflow has begin and end activity okay so whatever flow you want to create you have to create your flow in between these two activities okay on right side you can see a hamburger menu from where you can create a new workflow you can open the existing workflow you can copy some workflow out you can check out the workflow if you want to delete it out you can delete the workflow you can validate the workflow out. in the properties there is a tab called properties right so if you go to properties so you can see the properties of the workflows okay properties in the sense i will show you okay what i mean so this is quite important so the first is like key on which table um your workflow is resides on so this particular workflow is on change request table the status is published right now okay the condition is quite important the condition defines when this particular workflow game will get attached to your record so you can specify the condition over here okay and based on this condition if this condition is true this workflow will get attached to the records okay then if we have input activity if you want to pass some inputs activities application which application it belongs to schedule estimated run time all these activities that we will uh, once you go through the documentation you will come to know in depth so on the work on the workflow let's open that this run activity okay so if i open this run activity to, to, to so you can see this is how the run activity looks like okay in the name of the activity and here you can see the script okay so what run script does okay, whenever this it comes to this block of activity right so it gives you the provision to run this query so what this particular query is doing it's setting the current change request approval to requested okay in the similar way we have multiple run script we have manage approvals so if i go to approval group there is approval user and approval group so how what is the difference between these two right let's check oh, oh i think my net is quite slow today no worries we'll wait so you can see this is a user activity so what we are doing over here we are defining key current request requested by okay so there is a field called requested by on the change request that will be the user the manager of that user we are sending the approval to that particular person over here okay so this is one let's look have a look quick look at the group activity so what the group activity is loading come on it's taking a lot of it always takes a time when we go to workflow to open any activity mm -hmm. 
let's close it out okay we will see some other activities which will open for us okay so let's have look into item design generate approval for current sequence so let's open this workflow out someone change request someone item designer if it loads well and good you can try for this notification activity so from this activity you can trigger the notifications okay So this is the item designer generate approval for sequence workflow. So here also we have a run activity. So in the run activity, as I've shown you, we can write a script. It will. It's not loading. Okay, it got. It's loading now. So we have a script tag. Under that script tag, we can write the scripts. Run script. I want to show you the if activity. So on the if so this is the if activity for that particular workflow and if any user approves so here you can see as we were discussing right there is a variable called answer when the ch advanced checkbox is checked and it has defined some function so what this function is doing it's looking for some scratch pad variable if that scratch pad variable has somewhere uh, it doesn't have any value then it's returning yes as it's returning no so that's pretty pretty much from my side just go through some community links just practice something out on workflow so you, you will get a uh, more feel and you will feel more comfortable on workflow workflows are quite easy quite difficult to understand in start but once you start using it out on a daily activities it will be pretty easy so see you then in the next tutorial like follow subscribe thank you